Welcome back to Chem 4300. In this video, we're going to finish up chapter 14 on radiating dipoles in quantum mechanics. And now we're going to focus our attention on selection rules and learn how to calculate those transition dipole moments that we just learned about in the previous videos. Now, in all spectroscopies, it's, we're looking at the interaction of light and matter and how that interaction of light will involve the transitions between different quantized energy levels. And those would be associated with either translational motion, rotational motion, vibrational motion, or electronic motion, electrons moving, say, in different orbits in an atom or a molecule. And in all of those cases, we'll find that there will be certain transitions where the transition rate will be close to or, or, or actually zero. And that will be because the transition moment integral for that particular transition will evaluate to be close to zero or zero. So let's take a look at electric dipole transitions, which we've looked at in this chapter. And let's look at evaluating this transition dipole moment uh, integral. And it involves the dipole moment operator and the uh, stationary states between the levels that we're trying to connect with either light emission or absorption. So let's take, as an example, the quantum harmonic oscillator. We've already covered the quantum harmonic oscillator, but we didn't really look at the, tra the, the selection rules for uh, transitions between levels as it, the oscillator emits or absorbs light. So let's take, say, a diatomic molecule with an electric dipole moment that's vibrating and let's see if we can work out what those transition moments are. So we're going to start out by doing a Taylor series expansion of the electric dipole moment for this molecule. And we're going to look at it as the leading term is the electric dipole moment associated with the atoms at their equilibrium positions. So that's the equilibrium bond length in, say, a diatomic molecule. The next term in this expansion is going to be the rate of change of that dipole moment with the changing distance. And that's going to be multiplied times the, the deviation away from equilibrium. And then there'll be higher order terms here. We're going to focus our attention on these first two terms. The first term is the permanent electric dipole moment of the molecule when, when it's not vibrating. And then this term is the rate of change, the, the variation in the dipole moment as it's vibrating. So, we're going to ignore this term, so let's focus in on these terms and see what we get. So if we go and we plug them into our expression, I'll go back here real quick and see if we take our expression here where we're interested in putting, finding the dipole moment operator, and that's what we just did. We, we're taking this two terms as our operator, then we plug that operator into our integral, connecting the two states, M and N, to find out about the transition dipole moment between those two states, then this integral breaks up into two integrals, the first one involving the permanent electric dipole moment, and the next integral involving the change in the dipole moment as the molecule vibrates. And what we know is that this term is, this is just a, a constant, a number, that pulls out of the integral, and this term is just the integral of those two stationary states which have different n values. So because they're orthogonal, this integral just goes to zero, which means that our transition dipole moment operator really only depends upon the leading term here, which is the rate of change of the electric dipole moment as the molecule vibrates, and not the permanent dipole moment of that molecule. And this is, this is for vibration, okay? Now, so we're gonna take this term here and we're gonna focus in on that, and now we need to evaluate this integral for the harmonic oscillator. Now, we've evaluated integrals like this before for the harmonic oscillator. In that chapter, we looked at the solutions to the Schrodinger equation for the harmonic oscillator potential, the harmonic well, uh, and we saw that those potentials gave us these wave functions which involved Hermite polynomials. We made some coordinate transformations, so we replaced the deviation from equilibrium with x, and then we defined this Greek symbol psi as alpha times x, where alpha was some constants that we derived, defined in that chapter. And so this integral here gets transformed into this integral here, where this should be an integral that's very familiar to you from that chapter. So we're going to take our expressions for these wave functions, 
harmonic oscillator wave functions which involve those Hermite polynomials and we're going to substitute in and evaluate this whole integral with this multiplying coefficient to get the transition dipole moment. So here it is with those Hermite polynomials and the normalization constants here. And you can see that this guy, this product of HM, Psi, HN, we can use the recursive relation. This is something we did in the homework problems in that chapter. And we substitute in there and we turn this integral into two integrals here. And here's our normalization constants out here and here's the rate of change. And then we can simplify this expression by taking advantage of this rule that we found. So we knew that those Hermite polynomials were orthogonal and that you, if you integrate them, then they will always give you zero unless m and n are equal to each other. So then we just have this Kronecker delta here. And so if we rearrange this expression into this form, then I can substitute these guys here with that result from this integral. So that gives me this equation here, which tells me that the transition moment is that rate of change, and now it involves these normalization, which we can look up uh, from before, and then these, these uh, uh, Kronecker deltas. So let's look up these, these normalization constants, which are just involve you know, n uh, and some other factors there, uh, and that simplifies that expression down to this form here. And so there we have it. We've calculated the transition dipole moment for the harmonic oscillator. And what we've learned is that the transition has to involve states that are within plus or minus one of the state that you're transitioning from. So for example, if I'm doing absorption where I'm going up, then my m state is going to be n plus one. So that means that this term where m is equal to m plus one is going to be the non-zero term this will go to zero, and this will be the transition dipole moment with this term gone. If we go back to our rate that we derived in the beginning of the chapter, then we just need the transition dipole moment squared to substitute in here to get the transition rate. And so when I take that term for m is equal to m plus one, I get this expression for the rate. And there we have it for that uh, vibrational transition. We could do the same for emission. So m is going to be equal to n minus 1. That means m is equal to n minus 1. This term is non-zero. This term goes to 0. So going back to our rate expression here, we substitute in the, the, the term that, get, that includes that. And now when we square it, we get this expression here. So we've solved for the transition rates for absorption and emission in our vibrating diatomic molecule, which has a changing electric dipole moment, which is related to this term right here. So again, here we have the absorption, here we have the emission, and we see that the selection rule for the harmonic oscillator is delta n of plus or minus one. So with light shining on the harmonic oscillator, the diatomic molecule in this case, we can only use light to make transitions from a given end level to, to the level above it. Or if it's in an excited state and it's going down and it can only go down by one value of n and emit light in that step-by-step -step process. All right. So to get a transition moment that's non-zero, you require in this case that the rate of change of the dipole moment be non-zero. In other words, it's not, it's not necessarily that you, not necessary that you need a permanent electric dipole moment, it's only necessary that you have a rate of change of the dipole moment as the molecule undergoes its vibration. Right. So in other lectures, we're gonna learn about the transition selection rules for other types of motion, like rotational motion or electronic uh, transitions. We'll, we'll do those in those chapters when we talk about that type of quantized motion. We've already talked about the quantum harmonic oscillator but we didn't talk about transition rules there because we didn't know the material in this chapter. So we, we did a little catch up here to get the selection rules for the harmonic oscillator problem. But now, from here on, as we tackle each different type of motion in its quantized form and with quantum mechanics, we can also work out what the transition uh, selection rules will be.
Okay, so that's it for this video. I, I think I left another really cool web app by Paul Falstadt where you can look at quantum transitions for systems in one dimensional, uh, bound systems in one dimension with one dimensional potential energy surfaces. Okay, that's it.